So once again, good evening. So I see a lot of people have uh, already joined and um, we'll start the session, the session today. So as I said that today's session is about understanding the impact of economic events. Uh, it's about uh, doing fundamental analysis of the stock. And we want to make sure that um, we give you a kind of experience where you can also see that how uh, market news and events impact the price of commodities currencies and indices also and we want to we want to try it out and today um, whatever we are going to learn uh, as i have said in all my sessions it's going to be uh, mostly for the information purposes we want to make sure that um, if you learn any strategy and if you want to implement anything in your live trading accounts please make sure that uh, you go through a proper consultant and uh, you understand your risk and talk to your risk experts before you implement anything in your live accounts right uh, once again guys just a request please use your chat options um, to write something if you if you have any questions just try it out that if it works for you or not if you can see me properly if you can see my presentation just write yes or okay or anything uh, also want to make sure that chat panels are enabled i think it's yeah, I think everything is enabled. So just try it out if you can, if you're able to write this, you can use the Q&A option to write down your doubts and uh, any suggestions, anything which you want to say, you can just use uh, the Q&A or the chat option to do it. Now, let's understand about the fundamental analysis of a stock. Uh, what fundamental analysis actually is? So I want to make you very simple, guys. Again, at the end of the day, it's all about making sure that um, whatever we learn over here, it is done in the most simplistic manner. And uh, when we talk about fundamental analysis, there are two forms of analysis. One is fundamental, one is technical. And uh, let me explain you in this way. If you wanted to eat... Uh, at a good restaurant or at, at, at any restaurant and you would have two choices or three choices and if you were to fundamentally analyze that which restaurant you want to eat there are two ways you decide that one is you look around these two three restaurants if they're in the near vicinity and you see which is the most crowded one right so you assume that something which is more crowded must be serving good food and you enter and eat into that restaurant. That is called technical analysis. All you saw was volumes, right? You saw how many people were there sitting. Okay, this restaurant has the maximum number of people. So might as well just sit in this restaurant, right? Another way to decide this is go to each restaurant and see the ingredients which they are using and uh, the cost of those ingredients, how these ingredients are mixed, the price, on the menu and then compare it with the restaurants and then you decide where to eat so this is called fundamental analysis similarly in a stock you can do a technical analysis you can just see the number of buyers in a stock and you can enter and take a buy position or you can fundamentally analyze a stock by using their balance sheets using their working capital analysis checking their operating profits now it's called fundamental analysis because there is analysis involved. Do you need to be a financial analyst to do that? Well, if you do it in a professional manner, yes, you need to be a financial analyst. Um, as an investor, there are investment consultants who do that for you. Since I am conducting this session, today I want to take you through that journey that why we analyze and how we analyze and what is the impact of it right so keep your notepads with you if you find something which is really interesting and you want to have a look at it you can write it down to understand more and have a one-on-one -on -one session with me you can just talk to your relationship managers and they will guide you through and we can definitely have a one-on-one -on -one session also right so beginning with this let's say fundamental analysis of a stock so as i said now this is where we are going to dig deep into the finances of a company and as i said that this is something which is uh, really really important right because we are going to see the quantitative factors we are going to see 
the qualitative factors. And this is a kind of an approach uh, for the analysis of a stock, right? I'm going to take you to commodities and currencies also and tell you that which are the news that impact fundamentally um, to these products. And I'm going to take you through the economic calendar also. Because fundamental analysis, it's a very useful analysis in the long run. If you see for, for a long-term investment, if you have to take a long-term investment decision, uh, this is very important. Please note it down if you can. Fundamental analysis you do most of the time if you want to be invested in a stock or in a product for a longer term, right? There are a lot of analysts who conduct this analysis to find the influence of various factors, right? That actually affect the intrinsic value. What is the intrinsic value? Intrinsic value is that minimum value which is there. Like, for example, if I say gold as a product, do you think gold can go to zero? How many of you think here that gold prices can drop to zero? Use your chat options, guys. Use your chat options to write this answer. Let's make this a little more interesting. I know it's just me talking every day, but you can definitely use your chat options and try um, to, to just contribute if you have any questions, any suggestions. So how many of you feel that gold prices can go to zero? Like one day, gold prices will just be zero. Think about it. right exactly so some of you said that theoretically it can right if there is no demand then theoretically it can go to zero if we see practically the chances of that happening is less but yeah i mean yeah as long as we are talking theoretically it can if we talk about being a little practical it may not and that is an important thing why because we feel that gold has that intrinsic value, that emotional connection that we feel that it's hard for the gold prices to drop to zero. So that is what an intrinsic value actually is. And it's really important. Why? Because we need to understand that every stock also has an intrinsic value, right? Of course, a company, if gets bankrupt, can go to zero. The stock price can go to zero. But before, if kept everything normal, every company has an intrinsic value, right? So this is what normally fundamental analysis is about. There are so many factors which are need to be considered. And uh, to begin with the ones which we uh, want to talk about, there has to be uh, a way that how fundamental analysis techniques are applied, right? So a lot of times it happens that it is applied from a macro level first like you analyze first the economy which economy you want to invest in us china uk india then within that economy after you have shortlisted the economy you shortlist the industry which which sector which industry which sub industry which size of the company and in that size which company and that is how you pick out from macro to the micro level and pick now, there are a few factors which you as a financial analyst and you as a fundamentalist should look into a company, right? Again, guys, this is obviously uh, the, the points which I'm discussing. These are, this is the foundation level of what needs to be done. There's more to this, of course. It's not just one session which is enough to cover fundamental analysis, but then I want to make sure that I give you an overall perspective of the market. Let's start with working capital analysis, right? Working capital analysis, when I say one of the most important components of fundamental analysis is the working capital. So if I were to put in very simple words, the working capital analysis, it reflects whether there are sufficient 
current assets for the current liabilities that a company has so for example if i am a company and i have bills to pay so to pay those bills i should have enough money right so working capital literally means that whatever my near term liabilities are i should have short term assets to pay my short term liabilities right it basically measures the liquidity of the company how liquid the company is because the short term ability to cover the short term liabilities it will say that how well positioned your company is in the market so how do you calculate now a question came right now that working capital when we talk about it's basically required for the working of the company but how do you calculate so to calculate it you can add whatever cash in hand the company has whatever bills are expected to come which will be called account receivable and whatever inventory you have so you add all of that and you reduce the money which you have to pay the bills which you have to pay and the expenses which are accrued and you will get the working capital of the company see understand the important part about working capital analysis why do you need to calculate working capital and analyze it because it tells you that how well positioned the company is and it tells the liquidity about the company so if you have bills to pay on daily basis you should have enough money to pay those bills right that's what working capital is so this is one very important thing the working capital analysis second is operating profit margin so when you are looking at the financials of a company operating profit margin is basically the ratio of the operating income right whatever is the operating income you divided by the total revenue it definitely measures the profitability of the firm so it is also very important how do you why you would invest into a business and what will make you choose that i want to invest into that business you invest into a business why because you want to make money and how do you invest how do you decide by looking at the financials of the company numbers never lie that's the most important thing numbers never lie and that's why when we start looking at the uh, balance sheets of the company when we start looking at the cash flow of the company you start understanding that what how well positioned the company is so you look at the operating profit margin you look at the working capital and then you move on to understand the free cash flow what is the free cash flow it basically measures the profitability of the firm and you exclude the expenses which are non cash right and any spending which you have done on fixed equipments right any changes in the working capital from the balance sheet so free cash flow analysis it will tell you the overall value of a company it also tells you the health that how healthy the company is so it basically tells you that whatever free cash there is available right any non cash expenses you remove right any uh, sort of spending which has to be done on a equipment any sort of changes in the working capital which has been done so whatever is the free cash flow remaining that is something which is again very important and it measures the profitability then comes one of the most important part ratio analysis now how many times i'm i'm sure a lot of you uh, hear about the fundamental analysis of the company you have always heard about these p ratios and pb ratios so ratio analysis i want to put a little more emphasis on before i move on to the remaining factors these are eight important ratios which you must be looking at right eight really really important ratios you're looking at pe ratio look at debt equity ratio earning per share return on equity price to book ratio dividend to price ratio working capital ratio quick ratio these are few very important ratios which you must analyze right now the point is how do you interpret it so when we look at and these are again guys very simple ratios so let's start with pe ratio it is also called price earning ratio right and how do you find pe ratio whatever is the current stock price of a company right you divide that by the earning per share and these are the numbers which you can easily get online as well because these are publicly listed companies so you don't really have to do too much effort to find their financials today if you write pe ratio of coca cola you will be able to find out real quick i am even telling you that how do you calculate pe ratio you find out the current stock price of coca cola and you divide that 
by the earning per share and you will find the p ratio of coca cola now p ratio provides a sort of clearer picture of the amount of money that investors would be willing to invest in a share of a company for every dollar of its earnings so basically price to earnings so it also helps the investors to understand that whether a stock is overvalued or undervalued if the pe ratio is higher than the average pe ratio of the industry so price to earnings right which means if the price is increasing more than the earning per share that means the pe ratio continues to increase now why the somebody wants to pay more that is the question and sometimes that represents more confidence in the company it sometimes shows that the company is overvalued but why it is overvalued maybe investors are more confident but most likely pe ratio tells you that the amount of money that investors are willing to invest in a share of a company for every single dollar of their earnings and it is a very important uh, ingredient if you were to calculate ratios another thing debt equity ratio now this is very important why because the name suggests debt equity it's basically a sort of financial ratio right what does it tell you it's a proportion of how much debts have been accrued to finance the company's assets right and how much shareholders equity is in the company so there are two ways you raise capital one is by taking a loan second is by bringing business partners debt is important why why debt is important in your capital structure because when you're employing debt in your business why do you need to employ debt because to protect your control in the company if you have too many business partners then the control of the company gets diluted because everybody is your business partner so they have a say in how you manage the company but when you take a loan from someone they don't interfere in the management of the company they just need their interest and they need their money back so it's important that you must maintain a proper debt equity ratio right now if you divide the total debts of the company by the shareholders equity you will get a debt equity ratio now debt equity ratio can be in the form of 0.5 0.8 or 1 could be more than one so a higher debt obviously would uh, suggest that there is a little bit risk in the company but then it depends on the company model also it depends on under what economy we are operating in if it is a different industry which requires more debt then then it works out but if it is not then that company always need to be in check so debt equity ratio is one of those important ingredients because it tells you that what amount of debt is implied because if there is more debt then you must look at the interest coverage ratio which means how much cash you have or how much money you have to pay off the interest every time it occurs so everything is connected together next comes earning per share very important earning per share is the backbone of the financial statements every 3 months the earning season comes what is the earning season every 3 months when the these companies disclose their financial statements and talk about how much money they have made they want to disclose their earning per share it's the most widely used ratio what is the measure company's profitability how do you find you divide the net profit of the company by the number of outstanding shares so whatever is the net profit of the company you divide it by the number of shareholders there are and you will find earning per share right and this is the most important part of the company if analyst expected earning per share to be 80 cents earning per share came 70 cents in results the stock falls down why because it has missed out on the most important indicator in the financial analysis now when you are analyzing the stock if you are seeing uh, if you are measuring the financials of last 3 years and you see that quarter on quarter on quarter on year on year on year earning per share has continued to increase at a modest rate which means that the company is stronger because if earning per share is increasing quarter on quarter that means the net profits are going up right because shareholders are limited so as and when net profits go higher the earning per share also increases it's one of the most important part when you are analyzing a stock 
Next, there is return on equity. Serves a very important instrument, right? You, return on equity, as the name suggests, you're measuring the financial performance of a company. How do you do that? Whatever is the net income of the company, right? You divide it by the total equity which is there. Return on equity, right? Whatever is the income divided by the shareholders' equity. Now, this is considered to be the return on net assets, right? Because net, when I say net assets, what is net assets? There, whatever money shareholders have put, right? Because shareholders' equity which comes across, it is how do you find shareholders' equity? You minus the debt from the company's assets. So whatever are the total company's assets, you minus the debt and whatever is remaining is the shareholders' equity. Then whatever return has come, you divide it by the shareholders' equity and you get return on equity. So it's a very important instrument. It gives you that number, tells you that how profitable the company is, how is the financial performance of a company. And you can easily calculate this by dividing the net income of the company by the shareholders' equity. I hope uh, if you guys have any questions, please do write in your chat option. Right? As I said, guys, what I'm telling you right now, this is how a, a financial analyst would value a stock. Yes, of course, when we start uh, analyzing a company, these are some key indicators, but then we go much more deeper. And uh, as I said, one session is not enough, but we can always try to find out more that how um, uh, this normally can be done. And please continue to ask as many questions you can. And uh, this is something which is really important. And we should be able to um, answer later on if somebody asks you, okay, how do you fundamentally analyze a stock? You should be able to say that, okay, this is how I analyze the stock, right? Or these are the key ingredients which we must see. So there is a question right here. Is EPS calculated? Uh, is EPS calculated? Is this market price annualized EPS, not quarterly EPS of the company. See, earning per share is, so depends when the results are coming quarterly or annually. Most of the time, the financial uh, companies, they disclose their quarterly results. So when you see on the earnings uh, chart of a company, the results come quarter on quarter, quarter on quarter. So every quarter on quarter performance is measured, but at the same time, yearly performance is also measured. So let's say, for example, this is 2024 and October is going to come. Let's say Q3. So Q3 2024 results will be compared with Q3, Q2 2024. And then Q3 2024 results will also be compared with Q3 2023. Year on year, quarter on quarter. Because it is important to uh, identify quarter on quarter results as well and financial uh, year on year annual results as well. Then comes price to book ratio. Again, very important. As I said, all these ratios, that, there are so many ratios, guys, but the, these are the most important ones. When we see price to book ratio, now price to book ratio, it gives you a very larger picture of the current market value of the company. And you compare it to the book value. So it will tell you that how the company has performed over the years. It also tells you whether the company is overvalued or undervalued. Right. This is very important, guys, because price to book ratio. And when I say, uh, uh, you know, that how price to book ratio actually works, you're looking at. So it, they say that normally if the price to book ratio is under one, then it is uh, said that market is undervalued for this particular stock. Right. Uh, and if it is greater than one, then they say that it is overvalued. Again, if somebody just asked that what is a good price to book value ratio as i said if you're a value investor right if you prefer long-term buying if you want to buy at a price where you, where you feel that you know i'm going to buy this at the lowest and uh, want to hold it for a longer period of time you would prefer a price to book ratio lower than one because it suggests that the stock is undervalued right maybe people have not invested or they are waiting for something to happen, or the stock is just undervalued. So this is the benchmark for certain investors. But frequently, equities with a less strict price to book value is mostly less than three. So the, this is something which is there. 
uh, another question asked that which is better a p ratio or a pb ratio see both of that have their own indications a higher p ratio indicates a higher future growth expectation right lower p may suggest again undervaluation does not always mean that the company is not going to perform but if i say again lower pb which means lower price to book ratio suggests undervaluation highest or higher price to book value again may signal overvaluation or growth expectations so if the company is good they have performed well then you expect that it is overvalued why because it is doing well so maybe it's another indication that okay you buy but if the company is doing well and the price to book ratio is less which means it is undervalued and can be a really good buy for a value investor so this is something which is again uh, uh, very important and uh, you can definitely have a look at price to book ratio and as i said guys if you search for any company's financials you will find it there you don't have to calculate it but this is something which you should know next uh, again very important dividend to dividend to price ratio this is mostly indicated in a percentage value how much a company has paid out dividends every year as a percentage of its stock price so you whatever annual dividends are right a company declares dividend quarterly and if you hold a stock for entire one year you will have an annual dividend per share so whatever is your annual dividend you divide it by the current share price of the company and you will get dividend to price ratio so again uh, important indicator right because when you are looking at a uh, dividend to price ratio this is also a lot of people know this as a dividend yield so i'm sure you must have heard the dividend yield of this company is higher or dividend or yield of this stock is lower it's basically annual dividend divided by the share price of the company and it's it's important and it, like for example uh, a good like when we talk about a higher or a lower dividend ratio it is important because if the dividend payout ratio now dividend payout ratio is different uh, but when we see for example dividend to price ratio that is different the dividend to price ratio is also called dividend yield and dividend yield is again it shows how much a company has paid out in dividends when you compare it to the stock price higher now this is please really important write it down somewhere higher dividend yield does not always indicate that it's a very attractive investment opportunity because the dividend yield of a stock may be elevated because of a declining stock price also right because when you put a numerator and denominator together there is one way that ratio can go higher either the numerator increases which is a good thing or denominator falls so maybe your dividend is same but the stock price just fell a lot and that's why the dividend yield is looking higher so please be careful a higher dividend yield always does not mean that it's a attractive investment um uh, when we see dividend yield it's basically the amount of money a company pays right uh, mature companies are most likely to pay dividends the companies so the warren buffet style of investing you basically look at a lot of value companies right so the mature companies which we have seen they are most likely to pay dividends um companies which are in the utility sector which are uh, consumer staple industries which have relatively higher dividend yields so these kind of companies uh, again they are the ones who pay higher dividend and you can always um, keep a, a check on this also then we have again working capital ratio we understood that how important uh, working capital is so there is working capital ratio and then there is quick ratio working capital ratio again ability to pay off short term liabilities and when i say short term liabilities these are the liabilities which a company must pay within a year within the next 12 months so to pay those liability how much money do you have so that is something it indicates the liquidity of the company and you basically obtain whatever are your current liabilities you divide it by the current assets and you will find a working capital ratio lower working capital ratio is a red signal in the financial market that means your liabilities are higher than your assets so if i were to put as a general rule of thumb a 2 is to 1 ratio is always preferred right you want more money and less liability so you want more assets less liabilities similarly quick ratio is also related to liquidity very similar to working capital ratio but the only thing is quick ratio 
it considers the firm's liquidity in terms of current assets but it removes the inventory also so normally when we calculate working capital ratio we are looking at current assets in current assets it includes cash in hand plus the inventory but in quick ratio you even remove inventory all you are looking at is the cash so it even gives a reflection on the ability of the firm to pay current liabilities without having to sell the inventory you know so many times a firm relies on paying of the liability if their stock is sold so that also comes into current assets but in quick ratio you even remove the inventory all you are looking at is that how much more liquid the company is so a higher quick ratio or a larger quick ratio is basically tells you that your company is more liquid and again you can pay off your current liabilities faster so quick ratio is also something which is really important right so guys this is mostly about the ratio analysis now i'll come back to the list which i was talking about so you do ratio analysis and as you can see that within ratio analysis there are eight kinds of ratio which you can look into then you look at annual reports right annual reports again it's important because annual reports when i say you look at the profit and loss statement it's a very useful indicator there's no better way to uh, understand the financial position of a company in the market but you have to analyze the reports you have to look for the uh, growth indicators that's one of the most useful indicators right it's pl statement pnl statement will give you an idea about revenue expenses uh, which are incurring in that particular year or quarter uh, whether the company can pay their expenses or not whether they have generated profit or not whether the revenue has increased or not cost has come down or not so this is these are a few things so once you calculate the pnl you reach to profit after taxes right and once the income tax are deducted you are looking at again once taxes are deducted you are looking at profit after tax this also again will lead to a uh, calculation of the operating income also income from other sources so again annual reports are very important pnl statement income statement is really important it gives you an idea of how much expenses have been done whether revenues have gone up or not whether expenses have been controlled or not and a lot of this right and then there is a expense trends analysis it's basically a sort of summarized report on the expenses of a company over a time so they want to see uh, so you put a base year to it and you see that as compared to last year whether this year expenses have increased or decreased right then there there is a very uh, common uh, ingredient ebit and ebitda so earning before interest and taxes and then there is earning before interest and taxes and depreciation or amortization so it gives you a sort of outlook on the performance of the company and the core operations without even considering tax expenses so this is important why because when you are calculating earning before interest and taxes you are calculating your net income plus interest plus tax it is included but if you are looking at earning before interest and taxes and depreciation so you are adding depreciation also earning before interest and taxes is generally considered to be a good indicator of how the company is performing right uh, earning before interest taxes depreciation is basically an indicator of the spending power of the company so if if the company which you are analyzing has heavy capital companies like have fixed uh, heavy machinery like construction then earning before interest taxes and depreciation is useful because a lot of operating budget is eaten up by depreciation so it might give an incorrect idea of how well the company have performed financially that's why if you are analyzing a more capital intensive company ebit da is more important but if not then earning before interest and taxes gives you a fair idea so see guys this is important right uh this is something which a lot of people miss out but again uh, analysis is not that easy but that's all today's session is about understanding how do you fundamentally analyze a stock right then again balance sheet uh, there is no argument over here balance sheet of a company is is really important it summarizes your assets liabilities equity and it basically reflects the balance of the company right at a given date it, like if you are an investor it will help you get an idea how can you evaluate the capital structure of a company what is the rate of return it's basically a main pillar if you are doing a fundamental analysis of the company and you are not looking at the balance sheet it's a major major flaw you are also looking at debtor and creditors how much money you are going to receive how much money you have to pay right this is important the amount 
that is owed has to be repaid periodically right with or without interest but it has to be paid so if you have creditors which you have to provide money to so you have to see that if you have to pay them are you paying interest if you're paying interest then you have to keep a separate reserve for that and there are two kinds of creditors also the people whom you owe money to one are secured one is unsecured now secured creditors have provided you a loan but only when you have put some collateral but the unsecured ones they have not taken any collateral so for the secured creditors if you do not pay the loan they might seize the assets which you have kept as a collateral so this is important right so again you have to do a proper analysis of how the debtors and creditors are of a company right it basically ensures uh, a the company should maintain a positive relationship with shareholders with creditors it's something which is really important and then coming on to the last three factors one of the most important is major shareholders in the company now as an investor uh, you must do a background check into the companies that who are the top shareholders of the company what they are trying to invest in because if you're trying to invest in a company you must know that who are the top shareholders like if there's a company which manufactures tobacco right and another company which is uh, into life insurance now if these two companies and these are bigger names if they are the top investors of a company then it is important to look into the performance of these companies also right because if these two are the biggest shareholders of the company c that means tomorrow if something happens to these two companies the company C might also get affected. So any company which you're analyzing, look which are the biggest shareholders of that company and analyze those companies also. So today, if uh, Microsoft and uh, let's say in NVIDIA, uh, Apple and Microsoft become two main investors. So if they are the major shareholders in NVIDIA, you must make sure that you analyze Apple and Microsoft also before you fundamentally analyze NVIDIA. Because if tomorrow something happens to Apple or something happens to Microsoft, NVIDIA might lose one of their major shareholders. So that is bad for the company. So again, fundamentally analyzing the stock as well. Right. Then comes the other businesses. Of course, there one company can have different businesses, could be diversified into construction, could be diversified into stationery, could be diversified into uh, real estate or construction. So you need to see that what sort of income is coming from those segments. Like Amazon, for example, the stock went really up after the company uh, disclosed that their total revenue, which uh, has come 15% of the total revenues coming from cloud computing an area which was growing so further and becoming better so the stocks went up so revenue segmentation is also something important when you are seeing that revenue of this particular company has gone up you must know that where this revenue is coming from because if a company has multiple businesses maybe the revenue is coming from the area which is more vulnerable to pandemic so if walt disney is obtaining major revenue from theme parks so in 2020 the theme parks were closed. So Walt Disney stocks, major revenue will be down. So segmentation of revenue is very important. Where, which market it is coming from is also very important. Lastly, long-term liabilities. Very essential to analyze the long-term liabilities and you should know how the company will solve the long-term solvency of the company. Which means if the company has planned its long-term finances, which is like in case if any major capital acquired, if they have to purchase fixed assets or machineries and how much money they would need. So if there are any long-term liabilities which they have to pay. Now, apart from this, you must understand the business model of the company, right? How a company makes money. Profit model is really important. Um, you need to see the background of the promoter, right? It, it does not matter how profit making business model is. Uh, if there are strong promoters, you need to see their background also. It's equally important, right? Then there are, uh, 
again competitive advantages uh, how much experience the company has entry exit barriers right uh, swot analysis that which are the competitor you have to do a competitor analysis also the company the sector which you are looking at or the industry which you are looking at you have to do a basic sector analysis if the interest rates are going up should i invest into a tech sector or technology sector this is something which you must do then the future prospects of the company how other companies in the same sector are performing these are some of the important ingredients right uh, here a question over here is that these these kind of information looks very uh, significant and how do we analyze it so see guys as i said of course it's it's very significant and i think uh, we have covered a lot of ground in understanding that you know now if you sit and analyze a company you know what to see and it's not just the numbers right i mean it's not just about the numbers it's also uh, more about understanding these ratios it's also about understanding that there are so many things which we need to look at if we are looking at ratios there are so many kinds of ratios if we are looking at uh, for example if i'm looking at uh, the profit model of the company or uh, the business model of the company i also need to see uh, the 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 background of the promoters i also need to see that uh, which industry uh, this company is in or which sector is this and how that sector is performing how the other companies in the same sector as compared to this company are performing so there is a competitor analysis sector analysis industry analysis that is how you fundamentally analyze whether a company is good to invest in or not right so guys this is about a stock i'll take you further to uh, understanding of the economic impact or impact of economic events now we are reaching to a macro level right this kind of news which impacts commodities currencies right indices also sometimes are mostly commodities and currencies a lot um commodities gold silver platinum palladium currencies euro pound indices dow jones s&p 500 right like this and these are few important economic news and i'll share my live screen also with you and i'll tell you the uh, impact of these economic data so really quick let me explain you how each of these news works fomc meeting fomc stands for federal open market committee this is a division which has been uh, created by federal reserve federal reserve is the central bank of us and fomc uh, meeting happens to so that central bank um, to to know about central bank's decision on the interest rates when i say interest rates that means the cost of borrowing when you borrow money from the bank they charge you an interest who decides that interest central bank does so fomc meeting happens eight times in a year to take decision whether the cost of lending should be increased or not why it increases it increases because a uh, central bank feels that inflation is too high because demand is too high and to control the demand they must reduce the supply of money amongst people and that's why they make loans expensive because one way the supply of money spreads when the loans are cheaper people borrow more money and then they demand more so this is one of the most important economic data because if the loans are expensive which means the bigger companies and these are the same companies which are listed in the stock market facebook apple google tesla uh, walmart or johnson johnson or boeing how do you think they expand their operations of course from shareholders equity but they also have major borrowings right so higher interest rate it hurts the company's profitability and that's why whenever central bank announces or hints about an increase in interest rates the companies or the sentiment of the stock market is mostly negative towards that similarly we talk about gdp data gross domestic product it's basically the monetary value of all the goods and services which have been produced within an economy talk about consumer price index which measures inflation inflation has been the talk on the last 2 3 years post pandemic we realized that uh, a lot of uh, um, liquidity has been injected into the market and that increase the prices of common products 
so much that it was needed to reduce the money supply from the economy and that's why loans were made more expensive or the interest rates went up then there are employment indicators which means uh, how many uh, people were employed uh, in the previous month in the private sector in the public sector and that gives an idea to the central bank whether they should make loans expensive or not because if they make loans more expensive while the unemployment is high then it's going to backfire so they have to take this decision whether we should make loans expensive or not and they do that by looking at the inflation data by looking at the jobs data and manufacturing numbers as well so next is ism report on manufacturing and services tells you that what is the manufacturing condition lastly crude oil inventories which mostly affect crude oil a lot and we should know about this if you are a trader in crude oil you should definitely uh, know about this important part crude oil inventories right so these five to six important economic events really uh, generates a, a lot of mileage then earnings announcement which impacts the stock right and then there are analyst recommendations mergers take over this all uh, are very important economic events now uh, before i end the session i'm going to take you to the live to the main screen and i'm going to show you today a few economic data came and how it has impacted the markets right so this is your hands on experience on the live uh, trading platform and it will, it will help you understand and evaluate the impact of a news so i see a lot of uh, movement happening in the market right now and we can see some of that action uh, live as well let's see this so right now this is the live platform which you are looking at please write yes or okay or if you can if you can see my screen right now just use your chat options guys just use your chat options perfect i think everybody can see this okay why uh, Okay, now here I'm going to show you a economic calendar, right? And I'm going to show you that how you can navigate through that economic calendar. Economic calendar gives you uh, all the important economic data which is coming. And you use the economic calendar exactly the way I tell you. So I'm going to close everything on my screen just to give you an idea of how to use the economic calendar right here. Okay. Go to news and analysis click on economic calendar the economic calendar opens and again for a day trader it's it's like the bread and butter because if you don't know what economic data is going to come today and if you're trading without knowing that then it's more riskier you select the date 5th september which is today scroll down and select data which has a higher impact right to watch crude oil inventories, you must write medium impact also. So you will see crude oil inventories also. And you can select which countries are the most important ones. So here, let's say US is one of the most important. So you have selected United Kingdom. You have selected United States. US, Europe, UK, most important, right? Let me see if Europe is selected or Germany is selected. Germany being most important i put german also and euro area is already selected so now when i have selected highest now look at 5th september first let's start looking at the higher impact so you see 415 430 look 430 and 415 this is important news these are two important news which have come out employment change now when you click on this news it tells you that it measures this news measures the level of non-farm private employment based on the actual payroll data is produced by the adp research in collaboration with the stanford digital economy lab 
So basically tells you what is the sort of non-farm private employment. Jobless claims tells you people who have filed for unemployment benefits, right? For the first time during a specific reporting period. Now this is really important. Jobless claims, people who have filed for unemployment. If it is more than anticipated, that is not good for the labor market because there is more unemployment, correct? It has increased from previous month. Similarly, services PMI, which is a manufacturing data. Click on it, it tells you. Based on data compiled from purchasing and supply executives, what does it tell you? So it basically tells you that what is the manufacturing condition in the economy. A number below 50 indicates it's declining. Orders to service providers make up to about 90% of the US economy. So guys, these kind of economic data, this is a fundamental in a, on a macro level. If jobs generated are higher, it makes dollar more stronger, makes gold prices come down. Now, why I wanted to tell you was, look at 415, 430, right? This is the high impact news. Between 415, 430. Now I'm going to take you to gold show you the chart here I'm going to reduce it down today to 15 minutes duration so that you can see that how gold prices have moved during that time or let's say we do it every five minutes so data came so this is the horizontal axis right here see this from here 410 415 this is 415 gold prices started moving higher 2509 2510 and next 5 minutes 5 to 10 minutes from 2510 it moved to 2520 10 dollars up in 10 minutes in the next 10 minutes it went even higher to 2520 right 2520 so from 2510 it went to 2520 and then after the impact of data was over, it came down to 2510, continued to be around those levels. And now it has come down to 2507. This is the impact of economic data. Look at these two big candlesticks right here. Now this is another data, which is the manufacturing data, which came out at six o'clock, right? Look at the gold prices moving higher over here. And again, the impact of data was gone and it came down again. So for a short term trader, the economic data is like bread and butter. When you are looking at the data and if you are able to carefully interpret what the data means and what it means for the commodity or the currency, then you are able to trade in a better manner. So this is the impact of economic data. Tomorrow. Now, how do you see what news is going to come tomorrow? You go to economic calendar and do the same thing what I did. It's already there. Now you select 6 September. Now look, 6 September, let's see US. Tomorrow, US is going to disclose the unemployment rate. Expected number is 4.3%. Non-farm payrolls, what does non-farm payroll tells you? And it heavily affects US dollar bond and the stock market, right? Tells you that how many people were employed and it gives you a detailed industry data on employment, earnings, workers of the non-farm payroll. So this is something which is which is really, really important, guys. Gives you an idea about the jobs industry in US. Right? Why this is important? They are expecting a generation of 160,000 jobs. If it is less than that, then it's a clear indication for central bank that not enough jobs are being generated. And that means that they must make loans cheaper so that enough money can be circulated amongst people that increases stock market that increases the stock price because companies love to borrow money they would love to have interest rates lower so every single news it impacts the stock index it includes the bonds it includes especially this news non-farm payroll comes every first friday of the fresh month you must not miss this tomorrow the impact of this news is huge it comes at 4 30 pm on the friday that's tomorrow and you must see the impact of this on your portfolio if just for the experience 
if you have a demo account buy gold right now at whatever price you can and tomorrow 4:30 see the movement look at the news and see the movement don't think about profit and loss and this is for those people who have demo accounts or you can get one dummy account only not live trading account this is a trade which is uh, it's it's a dummy trade it's a practice trade i want you to experience this thing that what is the impact of the jobs report on commodities buy dow jones right now buy snp 500 buy gold and just see the impact of the news tomorrow at 4:30 and see what happens when markets open again in your dummy accounts in your practice accounts demo accounts not with real money but with fake money plastic money so that you can see tomorrow that how this news impacts right guys so this is something again as i say uh it's always good to uh understand that how uh, markets work today the session was about fundamental analysis understanding uh how do you analyze a stock talking about earning per share talking about uh profitability ratios of the company understanding how the economic news and these events impact i will have much more detailed sessions like for example we are going to have one session on earning seasons I'm going to have sessions on us elections coming in european central bank decisions fed interest rate decisions a lot more coming this month as i said this is a month uh where we are doing a webinar every single night so uh stick with us uh let's uh try to make the best use of this as we all know that uh, it takes 21 days to form a habit and uh, fortunately this month has 21 days of trading so we decided to make sure that uh, every single day we do a webinar and we'll make sure that we do it on different topic so tomorrow there will be a session which will be on a different topic if you want to register for that reach out uh, to our website or reach out to your rms and uh, uh, call them and tell them to register you for the webinar tomorrow because this is going to be um, another webinar in the ultimate webinar series tomorrow we are going to talk about so today we talked about fundamental analysis tomorrow we are going to talk about technical analysis and it will be a beginning introductory session of how charts and technicals work so today i talked about fundamental tomorrow i'm going to talk about technical so you will have both your analysis understanding that how it works so we'll have one session tomorrow and i hope to see all of you i see a lot of people who came uh, on the first day they continue to come now so i think that's a great thing all of you are very focused and and if you if anybody needs any one on one session i'm definitely there to do it and conduct it for you just uh, let me know and we'll definitely meet if you like this session please rate us uh, century financial on google reviews your review really helps us to continue uh, build this momentum and do more and more awareness sessions for our investors so uh, i hope that today uh, some value was created and i make sure that every single topic i'll try to give my 100% and make sure that um, you like each and every session and you learn something new uh, till then have a great night uh, today is teachers day and uh, it does not matter who we are where we are whatever we are doing we are here because um our teachers have put up a great deal into us our parents and teachers these two are the most important elements of our lives so wishing all of you a happy teachers day uh, wherever you are whoever you are if in any manner or any way you have been a mentor or teacher to someone has off to you it's one of the most difficult jobs and if you have done it uh, i think there is no other uh, wholesome or a full um, wholesome moment than and knowing that you have changed somebody's life by mentoring them or teaching them so with that note uh, thank you so much for your time and i'll see you tomorrow same time 7 to 8 with a different topic my name is yogesh you have a great day and i'll see you tomorrow